Welcome to Health, Safety, and Environment's video on using the Hazard Assessment web application. First, we're going to talk about how to access the web application. So if you're in Google, you can just type in UAlberta HA app, and it might even come up with a HA app login. Uh, you can click there, and that will actually come up with Hazard Assessment web app uh, for the University of Alberta. And this is our main page uh, for uh, HSE, where you will find access to this uh, website. So how to get started, um, so first you need administrator access, so we'll talk about that in a second. And there is the login button right here, so you can click uh, here and that will take you to eCompliance. Uh, if you scroll down on this page, you will see the administrators for the various faculties and portfolios. If you do not have access to this app, you need to email your administrator in order to get access. So now we can go to the website and so you would log in with your email and uh, password and you'll get this home page. This home page here I, gives you the steps and um, on the left hand side you can see uh, probably you will see my stuff, you will see employees if you happen to be a uh, departmental manager and you will see hazard assessment. You won't see a lot of the other stuff, it's not necessarily active in all the sites. Um, one thing you want to make sure is you come up to the top and you see current site. Click this little blue button and you want to make sure that you're in your faculty or portfolio site. If you're not in your faculty or portfolio site, you may not have uh, access and so you can come in here and find your site uh, in order to make sure you have access to your hazard assessments. As you can see, I'm just in our sandbox here so that we can play around with the various functions in this uh, web, uh, web app. So the first thing you want to do is click on hazard assessment and today we're not going to go into how to do a hazard assessment we're just going to talk about the tips and tricks of using the e-compliance software. So um, when you come in here you'll see a list of your hazard assessments and so you can click on these buttons on the left hand side to view or edit any hazard assessment that's already there. You can look at the properties, you can um, copy a hazard assessment and you can you certain functions, certain uh, profiles can delete. You may not have this delete button on the right hand side. If you have a list and some groups have, you know, 100 hazard assessments in there and you don't want to scroll through all of them, you can search. And so if I were to type in carpentry here, um, then the, only the carpentry shop hazard assessment would pop up. The other thing you can do is, uh, you know, if we go in here and I like to put my name in, so then I search and I can find any hazard assessment in the description that has my name uh, so that uh, it's easy for me to find my hazard assessments. Just a couple of tips. Uh, so to start from scratch, there's this blue button up at the top that says create and you can either create new or create from template. We're going to create new from today, but I just want to show you create from template. Here you can pick from a set number of hazard assessments that have some pre-filled information. It is not the be all end all, but it's just a place to get you started. And so if you're doing an administrative hazard assessment, you can start with administration. Uh, teacher would be good for teachers, instructors, prof professors. This social science faculty is one um, that uh, faculty here at the U of A created, and it's talking about high consequence in a administrative environment. Uh, so you can feel free to check that out. Uh, you may find others, and we're we're looking to add more templates into this uh, in future updates as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to create from new. And what happens here is you create a hazard assessment. First thing you name your hazard assessment. So I'm just going to call this test, and you put in just description test hazard assessment created by Greg Hodgson okay and then you can select the type of hazard assessment typically we use this job hazard assessment but maybe you're doing a hazard assessment on a specific piece of equipment a specific project that you're doing uh, you can select these it doesn't change the process at all it's just a note for you on why what what exactly we're assessing so I'm going to leave this on job hazard assessment You'll notice we've got buttons down here. We have save, publish, preview, and delete. Um, I'm going to hit save. This is not Google. It does not save automatically as frequently as, it, as we'd like. Um, so do hit the save button frequently and uh, as if you're working in Microsoft Word or something like that. Make sure you save often. <laughs> All right. Um, so you'll notice on the right hand side, date created, of course uh, the OHS code requires that all hazard assessments have a date on them, so this just assigns a date automatically based on when you created it. And then it'll show you your site, and I'm in the HSE sandbox, and then 
of the type of, of hazard assessment we're currently in draft. Okay, so once you have that created, then you can come down to the actual hazard assessment piece, and this is where you start entering the information. So uh, you hit the little blue button, sorry, down at the bottom, this little blue plus, and it's going to pop up and you can put in a task or a step. And so I'm going to do uh, prep work. Um, you know, most tasks have some sort of prep step, and there's going to be some hazards associated with that. Uh, I'm going to say I'm working with, with chemicals, so I'm going to type in chemicals here. And you'll notice that this section starts pre-populating. As I type in chemical, I can choose, okay, is this absorption? Is this ingestion? Is this inhalation? Uh, a lot of chemicals, of course, pose an inhalation hazard. So I'm going to put that on there. You may not know what you're searching for, though. And this is where this, the three little blue dots come in place. If you click on it, it'll actually give you a list of all the different hazards. And so if you knew you were dealing with chemicals and maybe there were, you weren't sure exactly what to put in here, you could scroll through this list and be like, oh, yeah, I'm working with a gas. So you could put that in here instead of chemical inhalation. They both kind of mean the same thing, right? But, um, uh, you know, the hazard is the fact that, okay, this is in the air and we could breathe it in, right? So once you've got your hazards entered, and you can enter a bunch of them, right? We could keep entering here. We could go, uh, maybe the chemical is also a risk of ingestion. Maybe there is a fire hazard, right? We could keep adding hazards to these. Now, each one that you add, you can then move on to the next section, which is the pre-control risk rating. And this, basically, you just select either a 1 to 5 for likelihood and a 1 to 5 for consequence, 5 being the higher value, 1 being the lower value. So likelihood is essentially, what's the likelihood of an incident occurring while using this product with no controls in place? And a lot of cases, that could be pretty high, right? You're usually looking at three, four, five. If we have no safe work procedures, no training, you know, no nothing, what's the likelihood of something bad happening? Um, so for chemical inhalation, I'm going to select a four on this one. And then consequence is how bad could it be if an incident occurs? And now this depends on the, the hazard itself. For example, if I'm working with a very toxic gas, uh, the consequence could be death. So I'm going to cut five here, and under health and safety, it says one or more fatalities. Um, maybe it's under fire and explosion, and so I'm going to hit a likelihood of, of five and a consequence of five. You know, property loss of greater than five million damage could be a high consequence. Now, the other thing you have to consider when you're looking at property losses, this is the institutional risk. So five million is considered high risk to to the institution, to your individual department. An explosion that costs ten thousand dollars could totally derail your research, right, or or the work that you're doing. And so, uh, so you might choose a lower value or maybe 10000 maybe 20000 whatever that value is in your budget, because that would be a high consequence because it would totally derail your, your project uh, at the time, right? So just different things you can select there, and we're going to hit Done. And what you'll see is I've selected it for both fire and explosion and chemical inhalation. It's just multiplicative. It gives us a risk rating of 20, and we're going to get to what that means in a minute. The next step here, B, is where we enter controls. And so for chemical inhalation, um, we would likely be using a fume hood, right? So that's a really important control. We would probably have some safe work practices. And uh, you can see as I enter in uh, these, it's searching and I can find them very quickly. But again, if you're not sure what to put, you can click the three little blue dots and it's going to give you engineering, it's going to give you administrative, and it's going to give you personal protective controls. We scroll down to the bottom. There they are. And so, for example, uh, so I'm talking to chemical inhalation, and I'm scrolling down, and I look, and I see, oh, yeah, uh, respiratory protective equipment, right? So I would use a, a respiratory protection with a chemical cartridge in order to protect against chemical inhalation, right? So now I've got an engineering, an administrative, and PPE. Keep adding controls until you have everything either that you have implemented or that you're going to implement to protect against this hazard. And then we can look at the post-control risk rating. So um, there's a few different things is, you know, what's the likelihood of exposure, right? That's what we're looking at here. So if we're dealing with this chemical and we have safe work procedures and we have ventilation, the likelihood of exposure has likely decreased, 
right? So we might drop that to a one or a two. And uh, the other thing that we could look at is if an exposure occurs, could we reduce the consequence? And that's something where PPE comes in and you could factor a PPE because respiratory protection is actually going to prevent the exposure, right? Um, but it, if we count the exposure as being, okay, the person was exposed to this gas as a whole, what the respiratory protection does is it reduces the consequence of that exposure. So it's kind of that last line of defense. And so we might actually say in here, okay, if there's a leak and uh, the person is exposed, the fact that they're wearing rep rep uh, respiratory protection means that we're actually going to reduce their consequence. And so instead of a fatality, uh, you know, we might have um, a, an injury. It might even be just a minor injury to that individual uh, because they were wearing the respiratory protection. So we can click uh, done there and you'll see it does the multiplication and it's going to rank it as a four as a post control. There's obviously a lot more to that. We'll get into that in a separate video where we talk specifically about how to do a hazard assessment. This is just to demonstrate the options in here uh, with this tool. The great part about this tool is as you enter these in, you can see it didn't take very long to enter those in. As you get used to the system, you get faster at it. But as you can see it down at the bottom, it's starting to populate the hazard assessment. And so here we have our task, which is prep work. We have the various hazards that we've input here and then the controls. And so we have our pre-control risk rating here of 20, and that's showing yellow, which is a, a moderate risk. And we've gone down to um, four, which is color-coded blue as the lowest risk. So it goes blue, green, uh, yellow, and then red. And so uh, we can use that in order to say, yes, we have significantly reduced the risk of chemical inhalation uh, when doing this task. And that's really the important part. At the end of the day, once you enter all these in, then you have a couple of options. So the first option is always save, right? Click that save button. And then the other thing is you can publish this or you can just leave it in draft and preview the report. Now publishing the report is actually going to um, allow you to say, hey, everybody in my department or everybody in my lab you can read this. But in order to do that, you have everybody has to have access into e-compliance. So that's not always the case. Most groups, they use this preview report button. And what it is, is it's going to download a PDF. Okay, and let me just uh, bring this up here. So this PDF, now you can actually look at this and you could save this PDF and you could share it on your um, your chair drive, your Google drive, you could share it through your, I don't know if you have an E-class instance, whatever it is, you can share this hazard assessment. And so it has all the information that I entered in, and obviously this would be uh, fully flushed out if this were finished. And the other nice thing is on every hazard assessment, it prints the legend. So those likelihood and consequence that I was talking about uh, are basically in here. And you can have, um, you know, your health and safety consequences, your environment consequences, your property consequences, and take these with that grain of salt. Just because the university says, you know, $5 million is a, a high risk loss, that might not be your value, right? Make sure you're adjusting that to what could be devastating for your work. Um, I really like the health and safety ones because these are pretty standard. If we have a fatality, that is absolutely high risk permanently disabling injuries is a four, right? So we need to make sure we are uh, managing those risks. Uh, the environment ones are pretty good as well. And then the likelihood, uh, you got to think again, pre-control is, yes, this is absolutely going to happen if somebody untrained with no controls in place is handling this, there's going to be exposure. Um, and then post-control, you can look at that and say, you know what? we've done a lot, we've reduced this risk. And so that's a little bit subjective on this side. Again, these definitions are based on the University of Alberta uh, risk matrix. So that's the tool, uh, hazard assessment web app in a uh, pinch. Uh, if you have questions, please contact health safety environment at hse.info at ualberta.ca and we'd be happy to help uh, or obviously uh, talk to your administrator uh, or supervisor as well. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.